Hello and welcome to our latest video. Uh, my name is Sean Donahue and this is my Retro Computers YouTube channel and we have over a thousand subscribers. So if you've recently subscribed or, you, or you subscribed a while ago, thank you so much for supporting our channel. I couldn't, uh, I just would never have believed it when we first started doing these videos that we'd, we'd end up with over a thousand subscribers. Um, it means a great deal to me and I, you know, I thank you from the bottom of my heart that you've subscribed to the channel, you watch what, what I do and what we do, and uh, all your comments, they're so, oh, they're, they're just brilliant. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's turning into a community now. And, and thank you very much. I just, I just overwhelmed with the amount of people that subscribe to these videos to and to watch uh, what we do. It's absolutely fantastic. So it's brilliant. So what are we going to talk about today? Well, I suppose we're going to have to talk about Commodore and the up and coming uh, crowdfunding campaign. Um, so those of you that don't know um, and watching this for the first time, don't forget to subscribe and turn those notifications on. Um, but basically what we're going to do is we're going to bring back Commodore, right? We're going to name our system that, that at the moment is called My Retro Computer My64. We're going to name it the Commodore 64 because after all, this used to be called the Commodore 64 uh, in 2011 anyway. And so we're not just going to do that. We're going to bring out colors. We're going to bring out, uh, we're going to call it the Commodore 64 Chameleon. And that's going to be uh, a lot of different colours you can choose from. So we're trying to make it so there's something for everyone in this crowdfunding campaign. Uh, we're going to bring out the bare bones, uh, which is what we sell now. Uh, we're also going to bring out the extreme, uh, which is a mid-range PC, and we're going to bring out the ultimate, which is a gaming PC, all under the Commodore branding. It's going to be absolutely phenomenal. Um, so with the crowdfunding, up until pretty much now I've been trying to do it myself right and there's two there's two parts there's, there's lots of different parts to a crowdfunding campaign but to break it down there's two parts you've got the pre-launch you've got the launch and the pre-launch in itself is unbelievably complicated um, so with together with what and the other stuff that I'm doing with the with the manufacturers to getting all the all this homes and getting it right um, I just I, I found that I'm not going to have the time to do it all. So I've decided to outsource the crowdfunding to a uh, crowdfunding agency in Colorado in America. Uh, they've got a proven track record, they've got lots of campaigns that have, that have raised millions, um, you know, uh, lots of successful campaigns that have, that have raised millions. So I'm hoping to get with the Commodore branding that we're going to be really successful with this company. Um, now, it does. It comes at a price to me, it's, it's a lot of money up front. So um, I've come to the conclusion that I could do with selling some more uh, cases and uh, and and the case sales have dropped off. Now people are waiting for the Commodore uh, and the crowdfunding campaign. So I've decided to try and bring a way to, to get the sales to go back up again. And the way I've done that is um, we're going to offer the My64 or the MyVic20 fully built with the Raspberry Pi 4 4 gigabyte. Um, so what that means is you can go on the website and go on the website now it's up and running now um, if I just scroll up there it is there uh, it's 250 pounds for a fully built system and let me go into the go into the pricing of this if you go on a website right now and buy a my64 and then buy the Raspberry Pi adapter kit separate and then go to uh, uh, a Raspberry Pi seller and buy the Raspberry Pi 4 4 gigabyte and a power supply it's going to cost you nearly 300 or, or over 300 pounds right uh, we're offering the whole thing built for 250 so it's a great deal right um, and it's going to move some stock for us and it's going to give us some extra funds because basically it's just sitting here we might as well sell it uh, and and make something out of it um, so it's going to be great for you guys you're going to get a cheap system it's already built so it's ideal for someone that don't want to build their own system and um, not confident and they just want to buy something built and it's a Raspberry Pi retro Commodore you know retro my 64 I can't call it we can't call it a Commodore 64 yet um, so that's what we're looking at doing um, and try and think of it like this you don't need anything the only thing that you're going to need after buying this is a monitor you've got everything else everything's included in there um, you've even got the SD card which will have noobs on it and what noobs is is it's uh, basically uh, the uh, bootloader so you you don't boot into an operating system because there's no operating system on the SD card right uh, what it is is you boot into a bootloader that gives you the uh, uh, sort of like drop down list 
of what operating system you would want to be installed. You can only do this once, so once you install the operating system, you're stuck with that operating system. Um, but it, it would you'll you'll have a choice of operating systems, and you can you can actually sort of like install which one you want. So that's what that's about. Now, when you go through this process and you install your operating system, you're going to find out that the LED light doesn't work because it needs to be programmed. Um, so it's very easy. Um, I've covered this before. And what we'll do is we'll, cut that, we'll use that bit of footage of me showing you how to program the LED light and the power switch. And we'll attach it to the end of this video so you can actually see it. I've done it before as well. Um, but so you can actually see because I don't want to go, I don't want to go through it all again. It's it's very easy to do anyway. Um, so you know it's what the Raspberry Pi is all about, coding and things like that. But this is just copy and paste. You don't have to type anything in. It's very simple. And then once you've done this, you'll find that the LED light will work. Sometimes it's a little bit problematic. I've found on on some instances. The light doesn't go out when you turn the Raspberry Pi off. Sometimes it does. It's weird, but it's just one of those things. Is what the Raspberry Pi is all about. Um, but so that's what we want to do. And I just wanted to tell everybody that you can go on the site now and you can buy a Raspberry Pi uh, retro uh, computer, basically Raspberry Pi for retro computer on our website right now for two hundred and fifty pounds. Uh, and it's a steal at that price. It's a bargain because of uh, you're getting a. Uh, a mechanical, a retro mechanical keyboard um, with uh, double shot keycaps, which are phenomenal. Uh, you know, cherry blue key switches. It's brilliant. So, um, I think I've covered everything I wanted to say today about what we're doing. Um, the other thing I wanted to say is now that we've got a. Um, a crowdfunding agency on board that specialise in crowdfunding. It's taken a lot of uh, the stress away from me because I know that someone else is going to be covering that side of things. Um, but also, us, when, when we were talking about uh, what we were doing, um, and they said, "When did you want to launch?" and I said, "Well, I want to launch at the end of um, sort of like at the end of February." And they basically laughed. Um, and they said that you need uh, a lot more time to gather uh, on the pre-launch phase. Uh, one to hone the adverts to get them so that they actually work and they're going to the right people and two to gather all the emails because we need tens of thousands of emails before we actually launch um, so they've recommended that we put that back to the end of March so I'm happy with that um, so it's basically we're gonna the, the actual launch will be the, towards the end of March rather than towards the end of February unfortunately um, but it's just the way it is we need to this campaign needs to be right uh, it's not going to launch it's not going to work itself it's not like I'm just going to launch it on day one and expect it to fund itself it won't work like even with the Commodore branding it won't work like that um, so we have to do it right we have to have a, a, a successful pre-launch um, to, to, to gather the emails so that when we actually do the launch um, a small percentage of the emails we got will go on, the people will go on to actually buy one of the Commodore, Commodore 64 products that we'll have on the crowdfunding. And the idea is on the crowdfunding that within the first week you, you're at least 30% funded. Or I think it might be the first couple of days you need to be 30% 30, 30 funded, I can't remember. But basically you need a, a large amount of funding up front because it it makes the algorithm work and you come up to the uh, to the top of the pages on Kickstarter and there's all sorts of things dynamics in the background that you don't know you know no one knows anything about unless they've done a crowdfunding campaign but it's so complicated and me personally I'm so happy that I have outsourced it now um, you know I was starting to worry because it's a lot of money and um, you know but now I've actually done it and uh, it's just a it's just a weight off my shoulders and also to know that someone is doing this that knows what they're talking about if you know what I mean so um, I think I've said everything I wanted to say um, so if you uh, want to watch these and you want to um, uh, in the future buy a Commodore 64 from us uh, please and even not just that watching videos because we will carry on doing builds um, you know in the not too distant future I'll come out with another build um, so there'll be something to watch as well watch me build doing a build I'm thinking of doing something that's got nothing to do with my retro computer but it's still go on the channel I've managed to buy a, um, a, an old aluminium Mac tower um, G5 Mac um, and uh, and it's been, I've, I bought it years ago, about two or three years ago. Uh, it, it doesn't work. Uh, and I thought, why don't I turn it into a PC? And I was thinking about doing that. So comment below on that, whether you'd like to see that. Because um, I was thinking of buying, um, getting some aluminium, 
laser cut so that I could uh, take a section out the back and like, turn it into a uh, the rear I.O. part of it and everything else because it's all different on the back on the Mac. Um, but yeah, so I was thinking of doing that and it'd be a nice little video, something different. Um, but anyway, so if you like what you see and um, yeah, please subscribe. Um, all I can say is I want to smash these subscribers now. Let's go 1.5 to 2,000 subscribers. It'd be absolutely fantastic. And if you do subscribe, don't forget to turn the notifications on so you know when we bring out a new video. I've taken, you've installed Raspberryan or Twister OS, which is what I'm using, which I think is absolutely fantastic. So what we're going to do now is enable the LED light because we've plugged all the wires in, but the light's not working. So that's what we're going to do now. So I've taken the liberty to record the desktop. So if we just open up a terminal, and I've already uh, conveniently typed it already. So um, what we need to type into the terminal is sudo raspy-config. And then we press return. And that's going to bring up the configuration uh, screen. So what we want to enter here is item 3, which is interface options. And then we want to go down to P6, which is serial port enable disable. Press enter again. And then it's asking us, would we like a login shell to be accessible over the serial? And we want to leave that as default, no. And then would you like uh, the serial port hardware to be enabled? Again, we want to keep that as yes. So we click return once more. Then we want to click return when it says OK. And then we want to finish. So if we use the right arrow key uh, twice, it takes us to finish. Press return once more and we're out. And that's done. When we rebuilt the system, uh, the LED light will be working. But we don't want to re reboot the system just yet. We want to do one more thing. The LED light is now up and running, even though we haven't tested it yet. The next thing to do is do the power switch. Now, I've got to be honest, I'm not the most, the world's most gifted person at programming or anything like that um, and using the Pi. I've only used it a few times a few years ago now. Um, so I thought, you know, instead of trying to figure it out myself, I'll just go and have a look at someone else's tutorial on that. Um, so I picked, a, I'll, I'll look, there's lots of different ways to do these things, lots of different ways for the LED lights, lots of different ways for the power switches. I've just picked the easiest way that I could think, you know, the easiest way for me, and I thought, you know, and, and in doing that, the easiest way for you guys. So this is a uh, script, uh, it's just two lines of code uh, in uh, Terminal, and it's from a guy called Zach from a website called How Chew, right? And it's, uh, it's it seems like it's a really good, website with, and there's lots of learning tools on it so I want to put a link to it and link to the uh, video as well because his video is much more professional than what mine is uh, and he goes into great detail about what he's doing. The only thing I will say when you watch it is don't get confused, he's working on the Pi remotely so he's controlling the Pi from a terminal uh, in his Mac so he's linking it to the Pi uh, and then carrying out the code there so it won't look the same. We're not doing that, we're just um, going straight into terminal in the Pi and doing it direct from the Pi. So let's um, go straight to that now and then I'll show you, it's so simple. So I've copied, I'm cheating and I've copied both lines of code into a text editor so I'm just going to uh, copy that and paste it into terminal. And then I'm going to press return, now I get an error because I've already installed it, whereas you won't get the area. It will actually go and grab the program and get it ready for installation. And then the next line of code actually installs it. So if we copy this and paste it into the terminal window, press enter and it will install it. So it's that simple, but uh, Zach's done all the work here. I mean, I'm just copying these uh, two lines of text but it's actually going to the github to the repository where he's put the program and it's taking it all from there and installing it so um, they've done a great job and uh, uh, you know thank you so much because it's so easy to follow and the tutorials I've looked at it's quite a few lines of code to write you know it's about 10 15 lines of code and it looks quite complicated and I thought this is an easier way to do it and uh, you know it's that's great so that's that done so now by now you should be able to press the power button and it will power down straight away and then leave it a, I don't know a minute, 
I don't know, half a minute or whatever, press the button again, it will power up, and this time you should see the LED light come on. Thanks very much for watching this video. 1,000 subscribers. Oh, that's, you know, it's amazing. But thanks very much for watching, and we'll catch you later. Bye.